For those of you who like to do journaling, you can see that I'm doing some journaling here. If you go to the Orthodox Jewish Bible, afii.org forward slash capital O, capital J, capital B dot PDF, you will see on page 730 the book of Daniel, which uh, was written probably about 530 BCE, but the first event that it talks about is 605. And here you have in verse 7 these uh, three friends of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But you are in no way prepared for the wonderful revelation that they're going to have when they say, using this Aramaic word, Pelamid Het, that they will not worship the idols of Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter 3, verse 12, chapter 3, verse 18. And that same word is going to be used in chapter 7, verse 14, which Rashi tells us is referring to the Messiah. But he doesn't tell us that this Bar Enosh will be worshipped as deity because he doesn't think about what this word Palak actually means. And it slips past him. Or he doesn't want to bring it up because it's too controversial. But in chapter 1, verses 1 to 21, there is the selection of Daniel and his friends for training, testing, and trajectory, meaning attaining wisdom and promotion. And that's what will happen if you meditate on this book. And that's what I'm praying you will do. So when we go to page 731, we see there's a dream about Babylon. That means not just Babylon, but Persia, Greece, and Rome. And we find out that man's extremity is God's opportunity because... Daniel gets not only the dream, but the interpretation. And we find out, look at this on page 732 in the OJB, verse 34 of chapter 2. Here we have Moshiach the rejected one who will make the kings shut their mouth. Isaiah 52, verse 15. And he's the one who will have an eternal kingdom. But these kingdoms that uh, Nebuchadnezzar is looking at in his dream, and that Daniel is uh, interpreting, these kingdoms will be destroyed. And so we, we see that the Bar Enosh is the Moshiach because he has an eternal kingdom, which Second Shmuel tells David will be the case with his Ben Dovid. Then we go to page 733, and we see this word, Pelamed Het. And then in chapter... 3, verse 18, we see it again. Pelam et het. We compare that to Daniel 7, 14, and we see again. Pelam et het. So who is the Mashiach? He's not some rabbi in Crown Heights moldering in the grave in Old Montefiore Cemetery. And if you have problems with the miracles that Yeshua does, you won't have those problems if you truly believe in the Hit Gashmut of the Zunfundereubishter, in the womb of Ha'alma, Batula, uh, he, if he's the one that can walk on the glory clouds, he can walk on the water. And um, we're talking about the Zunfundereubishter. Hallelujah, who's seen 
uh, in the fire. Do you see this? The Ben Harlow Keem. The bar, the bar, the bar, the sun. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. Psalm 2. See that word there? Look at chapter 3, verse 25. Then we go to the next chapter, 4, the second dream. And really, although this is about Nebuchadnezzar, it's also about you because of Shehitut Hamuk Ledet. Your insane pride will be your undoing. And this uh, total depravity is the problem that we have inherited. And that's why David said, Bara, create in me a clean heart, O God. Do a creationary miracle and deliver me from that which I had from conception. Not that my mother was evil, but that all men have total depravity from conception. Okay, then we get to chapter 5. And this is about the misuse of sacred objects, such as when Jewish people tell their children that it is halakhically forbidden for them to read the New Testament, and the New Testament is thrown in the garbage, so to speak. Well, when that happens, the handwriting is on the wall. Here is the greatest Jewish document of all time, where the Torah and the prophets are finally fulfilled. And this is written down by eyewitnesses who are Jews. And the world is shaken. And here the Jewish people are left behind because of the Belshazzar type mistake of parents. Suffer, allow the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Or the handwriting will be on the wall. Then we get the lion's den in chapter 6. Where all believers really are in an ungodly world. And where we find ourselves, in, not only in America, but in South Korea, because of the leftist revolution that's going on. And remember, Marx was an atheist. Never forget that. God's deliverance comes, however. Hallelujah. And um, we thank God that um, the one who is raised up will send the exiles back to rebuild the base on Mikdash. And the Kohen Gadol who does that has the name Yeshua, that Zechariah comes to this man and says, your name is the Moshiach. So don't give me any Menachem or any other name, no Bar Kokhba, no other name. There's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. And here we see Moshiach is Elohut, page 739, Pelamed Het. Uh, all peoples will Pelamed Het, the Moshiach. Rashi says this Bar Enosh is the Moshiach. Daniel says he is Elohut. And here we find out about Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And we find out that the one who will have an eternal kingdom is Elohut, the Bar Enosh, the Moshiach ben David. And in chapter 8, you have the anti-Moshiach, Antiochus Epiphanes, and uh, the Medo-Persian Greek uh, interpretation is given to you at the end of this chapter. And uh, in December 167 BCE, Antiochus Epiphanes defiles 
the Beis HaMikdash. And he is a picture of what's coming. Because war will be made against the Kadashim by similar anti-Moshiachs down through the centuries. You get to 9, chapter 9, verse 26. And after three score and two heptads, ye karet will be cut off. Moshiach. Yeshaya 53, 8. And not for himself. Yeshaya 53, verses 4 to 6. And verse 8. He's cut off for my people. And the troops of the coming Nagid shall destroy the ear, the city, and the Kodesh, the Beis HaMikdash, 70 CE. And then we get into the uh, last three chapters, 10, 11, and 12. And in chapter 12, you see... Rabim of them that sleep in the Admat Afar shall awake some to Haye Olam and some to reproaches and Deraon Olam. This is Gehinom. Now, we thank God that if you go to afii.org forward slash afii.pdf from page 536 and following, you will see some notes on Daniel. One of my favorite teachers was... Gleason Archer. If you look at his book, uh, he has an outline. And he tells you about these 70 weeks, about the persistent prayer, and how there's a triumph. A persistent prayer. The forces of demonic or satanic opposition do not prevail. Then he has proto-tribulation under Antiochus, typical of the final tribulation. So when you read this, you're supposed to see what's, what's facing us. A final Hitler, a final Holocaust. And here in his uh, outline of chapter 12, great tribulation, resurrection and judgment, sealing of these prophecies for future fulfillment, angels and the man clothed in linen, and the final commission to Daniel. He shows that this book was not written in the Maccabean period, that it is authentic. And I, as I have said before, if a run-of-the-mill Pentecostal such as myself can get 30 words from God, then we know that someone like Daniel could get 12 chapters from God. And we don't have to dismiss any of it because of an anti-supernatural bias. We can trust these words. We can study these words. We can let these words make us watchful and, and uh, put on the whole armor of God. And I pray that you will see that God wants you to 
Study to show yourself approved, a workman who needs not be ashamed, but rightly divides the word of truth. Lord, I pray right now against the spirit of false Moshiachs. I pray against the spirit of confusion, a spirit of pride, a spirit of insanity, insane pride. I pray, Lord, that Jewish people all over the world will be found clothed and in their right mind that the Gederazine demoniac will be saved, that he will take his nose out of rabbinic literature and put his nose in the true heritage of the Jewish people, the Tanakh, and especially this wonderful book in the Tanakh. And, oh God, I pray right now that people will realize they need a Savior, that there's only one, and that we will go through terrible fire in this world. But there's a fourth man in the fire, the Zunfunderoibister, the Ben Haelokim, the Ben Dovid, Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you, Lord. Hashem, we thank you, Lord, for the glory of the one who is with us, who will never leave us or forsake us. And that with him, we have the Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. Amen.